Hey baby. Hey, how are you, baby? Good, you? I'm good. Kopoa? Kopoa? Mm -hmm. mm. Hey, this fire has been good. Amen. Mm. 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 It's been good to me too. Mm -hmm. Welcome everyone to Ready to Mingle. Tunashkuru for your sana. support. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For your continuous, what is it called? Audience. Yes. Yeah. Remember to share. Yeah. yeah. Share as much as you can. Mm -hmm. Share the videos, share our channel. Let's grow. Let's grow the channel. Grow with us, mm -hmm. even as we're growing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So today we're going to. I remember we we've been on a journey. We've been on a journey. We've been um, uh, talking about our stories, our lives. Yeah. We've been. <laughs> it's been sometimes it's intense, like yeah. the last couple of episodes. But uh, thank you for. For watching and uh, for giving us your feedback, for the phone calls, for the comments. Asante ni sana, tuko salama, and we are giving God all the glory. So, we're going to go back to the story of, uh, you gave us your story and told us how your marriage, your previous marriage yeah. ended mm -hmm. and uh, how you were kicked out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. How you left. I left, tried to I come back, back. It kicked, kicked out. out and remained. Uh, the other thing was that was allowed me to, to function at that moment is that I knew I knew that once I had left, that I had left my office as a priest. Mm. But now when I came back and I came back and I was kicked out, I realized, oh, I've gone back to my office. Uh, uh, I, I'm not regulated anymore. Mm -hmm. yeah. So from there, even my prayer life was good. Mm -hmm. I would pray passionately. I know I was working with some friends, a friend of mine, very good close friend of mine, worked with me. Yeah, so it was a good time. And um, then, uh, interesting now that we did not end up this friendship. Yeah. Yeah, it did not destroy the friendship at mm -hmm. all. Yeah, you she, was, she, was, she, was, she was broken, but she, yeah, we continued being friends. Mm -hmm. and you would now visit. Yeah, I would visit, uh, yeah. but not. Yeah. Spending over the I'd, night. I'd never spent before. Mm. Yeah, I'd never even before. I never spent one mm -hmm. day, mm. but I would still visit, um, and I would still be very passionate about my supporting the family. Yeah, uh, paying school fees, uh, just sending some money, and this would move her a lot, and she'd want me to come. I tell you, once she sees a mess, a message, she calls back. Hey, but there, uh, my girl is in the house alone. You can go pause it, pause it, sit with him. I'm happy I drive there and I just go and pose with my son. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the friendship continued. Uh, yeah. Mm. Uh, no one, we didn't have disrespectful moments at all, at all. Mm. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, so, yeah. Good time. How, mm. like we, of course, always refer to her as uh, your late wife. Yes. So, how did that, uh, do you want to just share briefly about that and then I'll share my story about how, like, the passing, what happened? Oh, yeah. Um, so, with, with the friendship as it continued and me visiting once, I know they moved, they moved from off of our whole house to a new house. So, when they moved to a new house, um, uh, she was blessed. God blessed her a lot. Uh, she did well for herself uh, financially. So, she would, um, uh, I would visit and then I remember this one time uh, she she called me to tell me she's not okay. She's not feeling well. She's she's been diagnosed, and she, and uh, what she what she what she tells me she doesn't want me to repeat it to my family. Uh, and even though I tried asking her to be lenient to my family, she was telling me no. I don't want them to show mercy because I'm now sick. Uh, why, why haven't they been there before? I don't know. She she went along that line. Uh, so she, as I respected her, I told her, then I'll not tell anyone of my family. And I remember when my mom visited uh, from the US f for three months and she went back without knowing that mm. she was now sick. She told me, she actually told me when she's sick, she told me she has cancer. And I asked her, wow, what stage is it? She was like, no, you don't worry about the stage. You just know I'm going through therapy. And uh, I just wanted to tell you, but don't share it with your family. And then I remember he really asked her, what can I, how can I help? 
and then she sent me uh, she, uh, asked her can my NHIF help her. I don't know if I'm the one who asked you, she as the one who asked how is my NHIF. I told her, yeah, I'm, I'm supposed to. Let me find out. Because uh, I, I, I remember I never, I, it was a long time before I paid my NHIF. So when I called, I called NHIF office, they told me I have for, for her to to use my card for the chemo, uh, she has to, I have to prepare. Mm. I have to prepare 12 months, 12 months or 24 months. Mm. I can't remember. I had to prepay. So I pre I paid twelve months in advance. And then I remember by the time she was going for that uh chemo, that morning that my my I had not it uh I had not it uh, sorted it out. So she was like, No, don't worry, it's okay, don't worry, I'll just manage it. I told her no, not to let it go. So I managed to get to that twelve thousand bob. It was twelve thousand bob and I paid and I paid. And you know, when she was doing her chemo, she was told, and my NHF has paid for her a hundred thousand shillings. Mm. That session, that chemo session, the chemo session. Mm. And you continue to do that for the next and the next and the next and the next. Every time she goes a hundred thousand, a hundred thousand. Who goes to NHF? Yeah, NHF. Who goes to NHF? NHF. But yeah. now I don't know what's happening hey. with the NHF. Yeah. Anyway. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so she had to do MRI, all that. It pays 24,000 to 18,000 MRI, CT scans. Mm. They paid everything. Mm. Wow. So we were so amazed. And uh, she was strong. I would see her after every chemo session. Uh, she had the chemo uh, at, at the hospital where she was there for a, a half a day. Then she'd be given a smaller, a, an injection to go and have a new study in a local clinic. This was the worst than the chemo. It was the one which was not even uh, shading her hair, changing her skin color. Mm. So from that, I noticed she started having like, some changes. But she, uh, she'd still meet me and we'll still be happy. Did you move back? No, I didn't move back. I didn't move back. Why? Why I did not want to if if this if 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 if, if those stress there's no need for second stress. Mm. So if you're like no, you going uh, back is going to add to the stress. Yeah, if if the anything if anything, uh, I don't I wouldn't want to be a double stress. And I was like, uh, so let it flow as it comes because I remember from that time on, I mean, I started asking out how much is your rent. Um, and she was very open to that now. So she started opening up her life to me. Mm. How um. Um, so uh, that was my plan towards starting paying her rent. Probably with the end, with the end of us, we would like, move together. Mm. Yeah. So uh, she was strong. She was strong even through the chemo. Even she, she thought she was stage four. Mm. She was going through chemo, and she was, we were sure she was going to beat it. She was so powerful. She was so strong. Mm. She was so strong. She would still drive herself. Um, yeah. So um, the thing would be so that uh, this could lead to another. One of the point where she was coming to pass on is that she she still had her whole lifestyle. She didn't stop it, going out with her friends. Mm. So I see her posting some updates, uh, some status, and I'm asking her, "Is this a TBT?" Or she tells me no, but she just put on her, her weave, a wig. She looking good. So I, I kept asking. Don't you want to rest? Or don't you want to, do you still want to do these things? Don't you want to rest? And then you know, chemo, you know, uh, uh, cancer has some opportunistic diseases. Yeah. So we didn't expect anything to happen. But until this one day, now she, she can't, she wakes out. I'm just being called that she's in the hospital. Then I was told that, you know, the previous night she was, she called some friend. She could not talk. She was having a headache. She was dizzy and all that, so they took her to hospital. Then at hospitals now she shut down. Mm. She could not talk. She could not. It was not easy. Mm. And that was just a week, because now they started they started uh, diagnosing her and they said she has a lot of fluids in her head, a fluid in her head, mm. and she could they suspect meningitis, an opportunistic disease that comes attacks in on who has low immune. Mm. And she must have contacted it on, on, on one of those nights, on one of those days. Mm-hmm. So they could not do the the the, the test for meningitis uh, um, um, dictates that the, the fluid in her head has to finish, has to go down, because the swelling was pressing against the brain. Uh-huh. If they would do her uh, the test, the test which is done through the spinal cord, yeah, 
they have to remove the serum. Yeah. Uh, if they do that and if she has the fluids in her head, they might immobilize her. Mm. She might lose the her sense of her feet. Mm. And they don't want to do that to her. So they have to, first of all, give a treatment for that fluid to, 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 to reduce. Mm -hmm. Then they can do the test. Unfortunately, by, by the time they're doing the test, they did it not through that spine, but through the blood test. Before even the results came out, she, she, she had a heart attack. Heart attack? Yeah. Wow. Cardiac arrest, yeah. Yeah, I'm so sorry. Yeah. How was that uh, experience? No, I've never been crushed like that in my life. Mm. Uh, it's just bad. It was not easy. I remember when my uh, cousin called me to tell me on the news. Yeah, uh, maybe my, my neighbors had to come to my house now to console me. Mm -hmm. And I picked I, the whole week, the whole two weeks that followed through us burial, uh, going for funeral arrangements. It still was not going away. Mm -hmm. I was still broken. And my son, uh, because I had tried to see my son, seen my son, and I was now I picked, I picked him up and started living in him. Ah, we would only have to be strong for one another. Yeah. Yeah. So I remember at the time it was it was twenty twenty one, just after COVID, all the all the college the. Um, government uh, lockdowns that all been that all ceased eh? mm. so everyone was still going back to work i remember i was had stopped working because of covid uh, i used to be an uber driver so i had i pushed us i put a stop to that so i was in the house so but when my son came we just posed with him in the house it was a good time when he shared with him just uh, the father and son in the house mm. uh, uh he didn't he didn't break up as much as I did. Mm. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, he, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. He, either he, his mourning, his grieving was different. Um, I know personally I'm passionate. I grieve, my grief is open. I don't hide it. Mm. Yeah, if it's to cry, we'll cry. Yeah. yeah so mine just not hidden at him. He held up his, he didn't, and he was young. He was, uh, he was twelve years. He should have, he should have done something. I don't know. I don't know if it's something that is holding, he's holding back to date. Yeah. Uh, or rather, the, maybe even maybe the small. If you've, you've seen the small breakups he's had in his room, yeah. Yeah. When some things have gone wrong, maybe, maybe his game, has, his PS has broken down. He went into. Maybe that uh, place. Also, uh, uh, gaps of. Um, opportunities for him to give to to rent out, yeah. to rent out, and the time he his exams exams were down, he also cried, had a, uh, an episode. Mm. I think those are that's those are just gaps he's he allowing himself himself to break out. Yeah, but it was not easy. Yeah. He asked me um, mm. losing somebody whom you've um, had a life with. And for you, to, and for me, I'd not moved on. I was, I kept on telling her that I, I'm not moving on. My, I still want my house. I still want my home. You still my home. When you, when you feel you want to move on, know there's somebody who's waiting for you out there. So I never moved on. Mm. Yeah, and I kept, I kept my faith. Yeah, so that was it. Um, it was not easy. It was not easy. Actually, it happened. It felt like it was. We're not even the separation. Was, I didn't feel the separation mm. as much as I felt the death. The death, yeah. Because yeah. now there is no hope of reconciliation. Mm, mm. Yeah. 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 Sorry for your loss. Mm, how yeah. did? How long do you think it took for you to um, go through the entire mourning process? Um. Or grieving process, yeah. I mean, the grieving process was, I handled it, I handled it so that I was open. I remember mm -hmm. even in the funeral, I really broke down and I was helped by some male friends, men, male friends. Mm. Um, I know this is the first time after a very short period of time where I can talk openly about it. Yeah. Uh, I know there's some songs that I can listen to and I, it kicks back. But now if that song can play now, I can, I feel okay. Mm. So that was when you talk about that is when when I was with uh, when I was going to when we were, when I was working la this year this year last year when I was going with Madam to it was last year. Mm. 
yeah, last year towards uh, November, uh, September, November, as late as that. So that's 2023. We so, were still married. Yes, we were married. Yeah. yeah, I still would feel the grieving, the grieving inside of me. When the song I listened to and I, I start having that was thought. It's my brother who had posted that that song. I know uh, in the in the in the um, groups, the WhatsApp groups are sending off the send offs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I listened to that song and it was to break me. But nowadays I listen to it, I'm okay. Mm -hmm. So I can say it has been it was, it was from 21 to 22 good years of grieving. Do you think uh, moving on and getting married has contributed to <laughs> you? Um, getting through the grieving yes it has yes it has mm. it has it has uh it has it could have been, it's, it has made it a little bit easier mm. um knowing that now i have I have you and um um you you do you are waiting you're there for me so that if anything would happen if i had need if any grief would come up i would share it with you mm. i would say yeah this is what i'm feeling and uh you, I know you're a good person. You, you, you would allow me to go through it, and just allow me to be to be to give it all out. Yeah, so it's a done a good thing. Um, it has done a good thing. Uh, basically, just that being together with you, and even now, Joy and Jay uh, allow me to, to allow me to 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 play the role as a father in their lives. Allows me to sort to just to um, not forget or to, to put it aside, yeah. but rather just bearable so that uh, I have something occupying my mind mm. more than just sitting there and sulking and remembering. Mm. Yeah, they allow me to move on. Yeah, the, the moving on is important, yeah. and that's what you guys came in to do. I mean, you allowed, uh, God allowed that to happen for me, mm. to have you guys so that I can move on, yeah. uh, not stay in one spot, yeah. not move on and uh, ignore, but rather move on and just accept mm. that life is this way. Mm. I always tell my son, I know my son is one who's having trouble with the whole blending, he's still having trouble. I always tell him that when you add, when people when people come into our lives, we cannot replace them. His mother, no one can do that. Yeah. No one can replace her. Uh, only that when we add people in our lives, we just make it a little bit better. Mm. We end up at a comfort, somewhere comfortable more than where we could have been. Yeah. And so that's why we allow people into our lives. Mm. Yeah. So that's how it is. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So when we look at it uh, biblically. Mm you are allowed to get married yes, yes. again yes yeah mm. uh in my case i i got divorced mm. well i don't know mm. um <laughs> we this is a conversation we we had started mm. that uh the bible talks about divorces yes uh, and it says that uh if one is divorced mm. uh it allows you to reconcile yes with your your partner yeah uh, but not to get married not to, to mm. somebody else, mm. not to remarry. Mm. So if you remarry, you're committing adultery. You're committing adultery. Mm. Yeah. So we, it's something that we've been talking about. We mm. talked about, and we need to look at it again. Yes. Uh, according to what the scripture says. Mm. So first of all, um, when does the Bible allow divorce? Mm. Mm. Uh, that is something to look at, and also to to mention that. God hates divorce, yes. but he does not hate the divorcees. No. Just because you're divorced is that, does not mean now you are a rejected person, no, no, no. that God does not love you anymore, no, or now mm. your, all the privileges yes. are, you know, taken yeah. away. Mm. Eh? Mm. Mm. No, God loves loves the person who has been divorced, mm. bereaved, whatever it is that your story is, mm. God loves you. Yes. Yeah, what yes. happened to you does not, does not, the love of God uh, for us is unchangeable mm. it is uh mm. he loves us because his his nature is love yeah. um but what when does the bible allow allow divorce yeah it's interesting um it's interesting. Jesus, when you look at the bible mostly look at what jesus teaches yeah mm. uh, he had some conversation it's uh we'll, we'll try to help me remember <clears throat> he had a conversation with some pharisees who uh, 
were asking yeah. that Moses had given us permission for people to divorce. Yeah. So they're asking Christ, what does he say? Mm. And then that's when he talked to them and told them openly that Moses, this, uh, Moses told this because of the hardness of their heart. Yeah, yeah. The hardness of a human heart, therefore God comes to your level. Yeah. He comes to your level where you're hard and allows no things to happen mm -mm. in accordance to what you, what you call your, your own will. Yeah. So he did that. So it's here. It? Matthew 19, uh, from verse 1, talks about divorce. Oh, yeah. The answer is in verse 4. Marriage and divorce, verse 4. And he answered and said to them, Have you not read that he who made them at the beginning made them male and female? And said, for this reason, a man shall leave his house, father and mother mm. and be joined to his wife and the two shall become one flesh. So then they no longer, they are no longer two but one flesh. Therefore what God has joined together, let no man put, let no, no man separate. Then they say to him, why then did Moses command to give a certificate of divorce and to put her away? He said to them, Moses, because of your heart, of the hardness of your hearts, permitted you to divorce your wives from the beginning. But from the beginning, it was not so. Mm. And I say to you, whoever divorces his wife except for sexual immorality and marries another commits adultery, and whoever marries her is, who is divorced commits adultery. Yeah. So sexual immorality. So sexual immorality is a, is a cause for, for separation. Yeah. Uh, uh, now, now, in, in that context, yeah. Then does that the one who has who has been violated violated sexually? Mm -hmm. Do they also attain the the term divorcee? Ah, huh? what? Sorry. The one who has been violated uh, unfaithfully has, has been violated sexually. The one who has committed committed the faith. The one who has committed. No, both the one of who, them. Okay. Uh huh. The one who has committed and also and now the divorce has happened. Yeah. Do they still have the term a divorcee? And divorced. Uh, what do you think? They're still divorces. They're still divorces, yeah. 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 So, so the one who has committed uh, adultery, adultery and, one and the one who who's it was committed it against, was committed against. They still end up being called divorced. Yeah, yeah. They're not changed their, their status. Their status, yeah. They're not be called single. They don't. Yeah, they don't become single. So, so Jesus, I think, if you ask me, my conclusion therefore comes this way. Mm. That there's room for forgiveness, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. if, if even this unfaithfulness, Jesus does not say it will cost you eternal life, your eternal life, yeah, your eternity. Therefore, if He can forgive that, and you enter eternity, mm -hmm. I believe also unfaithfulness should be a forgivable thing between couples. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you the truth because I, I know. The, the, the seminar I attended some time back at church and there was a white man from the US who had come to giving the seminar to men mm -hmm. and he had gone through unfaithfulness with their wife just one of mm -hmm. but now they have, he's been reformed, rehabilitated he's reformed until one day the wife tells him, tells him I think you have a ministry there why don't you use that what you're going through to help other men? Mm -hmm. Because she forgave him. Mm -hmm. She did forgive him. Mm -hmm. And now it has blossomed to something beautiful. Mm -hmm. Now this guy comes all the way to you, to the, to, from the US to Kenya mm -hmm. and all over Africa, giving seven, those uh, six, uh, six, six days. Oh no, it was a two-day seminar. Mm -hmm. It gives you a, a very, very, very uh, practical things of way of life. Yeah. So yes, there's a place for forgiveness. Mm -hmm. I know, I know he still mentioned the hardness of the heart of these people because they did not have taken that. He had said, forgive them. Yeah. <laughs> and most had said, divorce. Yeah, 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 these yeah. people, their hardness was at that point. Yeah. And now I believe Jesus talks about if, if you know Christ, mm. you should be having a forgiving mm. heart. Well, he talks about forgiveness when Peter comes to him asking, how many times are we supposed to forgive? Yes. And it's 70 times 7. Yes. So this applies to everyone, including mm. spouses. Mm. But now, in my case, um, <laughs> So there is a bat somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah so yeah. as we got married, I think in what, 20, towards the end of 2010, I yeah, think. Yeah. Uh, so we met in, so I was in Dubai, then I went to Kuwait. We met in Kuwait. Mm. And um, yeah, so 
coming back, getting married, the AG. And then uh, we went back after some time. I got pregnant with Jay and I did not want to have him in Kuwait because I had been to the hospitals and I did not like the way they treated uh, us. Okay. Yeah, I did the, not this, like... This skin. Yes, yes. Mm. Back then. I don't know now, maybe it has changed. Mm. But uh, I did not like. Plus, um, by then, Kuwait, all the majority of the doctors uh, and the nurses, especially the nurses, did not speak English. Okay. Yeah, I did not speak English. And they were also from foreign countries. Mm. And... Uh, the treatment wasn't as good. Uh, I did not have a very good job mm. that I could afford a private hospital. Mm. We could afford private clinics, mm. but not a hospital where you can go to have your baby. There's no insurance. No, my my pay, my job grade couldn't have afforded me okay. insurance. By then, I was, uh, I think, a head waiter, assistant manager, something mm. like that. I had grown, and I think I was an assistant manager. But I had not gotten to the place where I can get all the privileges. Okay. If I if I was at a manager level, mm. then I would have gotten family privileges. Mm. So by then, I didn't have, and uh, we could not have afforded mm. um, to to pay to insurance. pay for yeah the insurance oh, or a private, private hospital, hospital um, to have the baby. Mm. So I thought, hey, let, let's do this. Let me go back home. Yeah. Let me go back home, have mm. my baby there. You stay mm. here, work, and just support us. Mm. Uh, you can come back like after six months or so. Mm. At least by then, Angekwa Misha Fikisha, his holiday. Yeah. After one year, he would have come back. But uh, because we are still newly married, it's over a year plus mm. in, in marriage, he thought, eh, I'm not going to let you guys go alone. No, it's, um. it's eh, Apana, I'm going home with you. If you're leaving, then I'm leaving with you. So there was a bit of a tussle there with that decision. Well, for me, I had decided I'm, I'm not giving birth. I'm not, I'm not being... My maid, my whoever, what is it called? My nurses, mm. when I'm giving birth, are not going to be people who don't speak English, yeah. who cannot understand what I'm saying. Uh. I'm not understanding what they're saying. Mm. Well, I did not imagine myself there. I did not want that at all. Mm. So my decision was to go back home. Yeah. My decision was to go back home. Okay. Plus, we were very few Kenyans. Mm. At that time, we were not many Kenyans, and everybody, of course, is working. Mm. So for me, um, in my company, in the hotel where I was working at, mm. uh, we were two ladies and three guys. Mm. Uh, and him, who was working, of course, in another company. Mm. So there were not many ladies who would also be there to help me. You know, you're a new mom, you have a newborn baby. Mm. So I, I thought it's going to be... Yeah. yeah, I thought, hey, I'm not going to manage this. Mm. Let me go home. So that was the verdict. But him, he decided, no, we're going back together. Mm. Yeah, so it took a while. But uh, finally, his decision was, no, I'm not letting you guys go alone. Uh, but I was like, Sasa, we're going back home together jobless. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, jobless. jobless. We have not lived in mm. Kenya together. Mm. So this means that we have to buy everything. Remember, I left right after Masai Mara. Mm. And right, right after Masai Mara, that's when uh, I had given away most of, most of my, my mm. items, mm. most of the, my household things. Mm. And now Kate was living with my mom. Mm. So at this time, I, am, I have gotten married. We've gotten married from there. Mm. Now we are coming to start life afresh. Mm. And we don't have money. Yeah. We don't have a job. Mm. You know? Mm. And so, but no, he decides, no, we're going together. I'm not, I'm not letting you go. Mm. by yourself mm. so we i resign he resigns mm -hmm. so we come back together so the money that we have we mm. buy do, items do, for the do, house do you think that is or, or do you think about that is responsibility, responsibility i yeah i was not happy even we were not even in good talking terms when we were even on the plane as we were coming back we were not in talking terms because i was like there's no way we're going i am pregnant yeah i'm going back home because i am pregnant I, mm. How, wh where are we going to get money to eat? Yeah. You know, we will need house rent, we need mm. all this. And you're coming back with me, we're both jobless. jobless yeah. You know, how are we That's going it. to do this, mm. you know? And so I thought that was irresponsible. Yeah. It was irresponsible. So, but he came, he, he, he did not want to leave me. Mm. So we come back, fine, there's no plan here. Mm. 
I'm pregnant. There's nothing I'm going to do right now. So I came back. I think I was about three or four months pregnant. So we come back. Whatever money we had, we paid rent, bought some stuff for the house, chairs, the beds and all that. And now the beds, imagine you have to buy a bed for Kate, a bed for ourselves, chairs, you know, all that and uh, everything. So meaning that we depleted Yes. Yeah, we both depleted Your savings, yeah. our savings. Mm. And so after some time, mm. it became very tough because now we don't have money. We mm. started borrowing, asking mm. for money from friends, from mm. people mm. and all that. I remember even my hospital bill was paid by friends mm. because we were very broke. Mm. Yeah, very, very broke. Mm. It was bad that uh, sometimes we would go uh, the whole day without eating yeah so he's uh going out to look for a job of course but uh the jobs he's getting are not his uh, kind of jobs he wants uh some comfort comfort mm. he wants uh, nice jobs mm. he wants to work for the the javas um, and, the... The, javas and uh, the what do you call them the kfcs no the, this this <laughs> supermarket before oh, like what not Na- yeah, Nakumat. He wanted to work at Nakumat. So he really, really strived to get a job at that Nakumat. So his dream job was no me not work Nakumat. I think he used to work at Carrefour in Kuwait. Ah. And he was a baker. So he wanted the same job here. Mm. Oh, I've come from abroad, I'm gonna get a job. No, there there's a pool of very many people here mm. who are also looking for a job. Mm. So there was a bit of um a struggle there mm, with mm. with finances mm. and uh so here we are i have gotten my baby uh we're still being helped by friends we have areas mm. uh, rent areas it's an issue to even get food for this new new mother mm. so it was it was a very big um problem we were going through a lot of problems we kept borrowing money mm. and so during this time so Actually, before I, I have the baby, because of what's going through, mm. I decide I'm going to find something to do. Mm. So I, I, I go to this town, I go to Kiambu town, and in Kiambu I get a, I see a hotel, and you know, I introduce myself, I tell them I'm a hotelier, of course you can see I'm pregnant, but there's something I can do, if there's something I can do, whatever gap you have, just mm. tell me. Mm. And so they had an issue with uh, cleaning their cleaning services. Mm. So I decided, I tell them, I can offer that. Mm. So I started offering them cleaning services. Mm. So I hired two guys, mm. and uh, so we would offer cleaning services. Mm. And so I did that in my pregnancy. We would scrub toilets, scrub floors. You know, we just did cleaning. Mm. Janitors. Yeah, mm. yeah. So that, that's what we did until, mm. so I was able at least to buy clothes. Mm for the baby with the money that I got from that job. Mm. And then, uh, yeah, now so we've had the baby. The baby comes. The baby Jay. comes. Jay comes. Jay. Mm. Yeah, he comes. Uh, it's an operation. No money to pay. But, you know, friends came through. Came through. Yeah. So during during this time, I think when I am going through, um, during the first during the last trimester mm. and after birth, I don't know what had happened to his phone, but he would really use my phone to communicate and all okay. that. Yeah, so one, one time I saw a message on, on Facebook that he had messaged a certain girl, and there was a conversation, and the last message was like, oh, thank you for yesterday, I don't know what. So I'm like, oh my gosh, what is this? Mm. So there's something that was going on. Of course, I confronted. I confronted him, but he said no. He she was helping me get a job. I'm like helping you get a job. You're telling her it was fun. It was. I mean, the choice of words here mm. is not like uh, this job is someone. Is yeah, it does mm. not. It doesn't look like what you're saying. Mm. So anyway, it's fishy. yeah, it's fishy. Then my my friends from from Kuwait, uh, my friends. Uh, so this is your phone. So you're not that, that you're no see, no see. No, 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 I'm not touching his phone. No, not I be no cannot. Your no, phone. no, it is your phone. My phone. Okay. So I see a message on my phone with somebody I don't even know. Yeah. yeah? And there's a message. There are conversations that are going on. And so I realized that uh, he would message even my friends. Mm. 
no. my friends to ask for money no. yeah and so most of my friends even right now mm. today mm. don't talk to me wow. because they feel they felt like because it was my my phone mm. my account mm. they felt like i was uh, i'm the one who was asking for money from them oh, so they did not understand why i decided to get married decided to move back to kenya and i'm here busy asking them for money mm. and i know how the hustling is mm. uh, over there mm. so they eventually stopped talking to me so when i would go to my phone to look for facebook messages mm. back then messenger was the thing mm. like to talk to people abroad you do use a lot of messenger mm. so my messages were all deleted even previous conversations oh. so I'm, i couldn't understand why mm. so he would message them we didn't have that option of deleting each message like mm. we have today like you can it, it's a clear clear chat. you clear a chat you mm. clear everything so all my chats had been cleared mm. kumbe these are the people that he is talking to mm. uh, over there so those are some of the things that now we started having problems because of that mm. I started having problems so then it got to and, uh, do the friends send money i don't know oh, so sometimes i would pressure him you know you just sitting here we don't have money we don't have food what are we going to eat so it would be it would be a big problem because yeah. i'm here my new mom i'm nursing mm. i'm nursing and we don't have food in the house yeah 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 so then he would now do that you know ask for money from friends and all that then it got to a point when when uh, it was too bad we had arrears very many months mm. very many months we started selling things okay we sold the cooker we sold the iron box we sold i mean we started selling things so that we can be able to buy food. Mm. Yeah, we started selling and selling. I got to a point um we now how the separation happened mm. is that he used to tell people Koenje, we are, we are from abroad, sijui nini, you know? And so one night uh we almost got our house we our house was almost broken into. Oh. Yeah, so at night I had I had something going on at the door. Mm. People were start, were trying to break in. Mm. So when we learned that, you know, Amy I was like me I can't leave you another day. Mm. So we moved. Mm. We moved. So I moved back to my mom. Oh. Yeah, I moved to my mom and he went to his dad. So we said let's move until we are able to do whatever. But at that point mm. our relationship was still very it wasn't uh, it was mm. still very mm. it was there yeah, the relationship was still very rocky yeah. it was not good because mm. money yeah money is a big issue. yeah and you you both seated there mm. and i kept remembering how i told you this i told you that you know you should stay here stay in kuwait mm. work just let me have the baby and then after six months you can come mm. yeah and then we'll see because we are already married probably there would be an option for me to come with the baby mm. so i mean we didn't agree mm. we didn't agree on that so i moved i moved to my mom he moved to his his dad's place mm. uh so that means we are separated mm. during this time when we are separated jay is like two months or less than two months oh, old yeah. oh. so this is very early on mm. so at this point um we i i decide you know i'm not going to wait for so long to heal mm. as i said it was a cs so i i moved i started going to apply for jobs mm. yeah, i started going to apply for jobs and i eventually got a job mm. so when i got a job uh, i moved my mom was of course staying in a when i got the job it was way it was on on langata road it was very far and we were living in gidunguri wow <laughs> so you can imagine so we had to move mm. from gidunguri to langata road mm. and his father was living somewhere close in karen mm. so meaning that we are a bit closer mm. but now we still have a problem with the relationship mm. because of these things that are happening and because of the messages that have been seen mm. and because he is uh, refusing these jobs mm. and uh, he is insisting no i have to what i have to get this kind of a job mm. but eventually he said okay let me go back 
Ah, to Kuwait. Yeah, let me mm. go back. Let me go back to Kuwait or buy wherever I'll be able to go to. Then uh, now because I have a job, mm. I help him with finances mm. to go pay the agent and to do mm. all that. So he got a job. And because he got a job, he, but he needed to pay his flight. Mm. His flight and I think the agent's uh, fee. Yeah. So I, because I have a job, by now I think I am two months in mm. employment. Mm. So I talk to my boss, talk to the bank. Mm. So they give me a loan. Mm. So I took a loan so that he can be able to pay for his ticket. So we paid for his his ticket and we paid for his um his fee. Yeah. Then he left. Mm. I think it was Qatar. I can't remember. I think he went to Qatar. So when he went to Qatar, he communicated to us a few times. Mm. And then uh he was not sending the money to pay the loan. Because mm. this is I've taken a loan for you. Yeah. So you need to pay your you loan. Need to pay up the loan. Yeah, pay mm. up the loan. So mm. this burden was put on me. I'm the mm. one who was, was paying yeah. the, loan. the loan. He's not repaying his mm. loan. Then um we came to a point where the communication reduced. Mm. Like he would not uh pick up my calls or when I would call, he would stay for so long without uh answering back. So I didn't know whether he's working or He's on off, or I mean, there was no, the communication was not a breakdown, yeah, yeah, as good as it should have been. Mm. And uh, I remember eventually, like when he would answer, he would tell me, "Oh, I'm sorry, we are at a certain person's place." And because I had been to Dubai, I think you went to Dubai because I had been into Dubai to Dubai first. We met in Kuwait. Mm. He had never been to Dubai, so I connected him with my friends in Dubai. In Dubai. So. He would tell me, I am with so and so. Mm. And some of these friends were female. Mm. So I would ask him, What are you doing at so and so's place? Mm. Just the two of you. Mm. So when I started questioning his being at this friend's place, mm. then we started having issues because of that. Mm. And he stopped picking my calls. Mm. And uh, yeah, so that's how that's how it ended. Wow. That's how it ended. He stopped picking my calls, stopped communicating. I would call, text, and do all that. Nothing would happen. Okay. So it that went on for what so long? Mm. I this is twenty twelve. I'm talking about. Mm. I filed for divorce in. When was it? Eighteen. No, not twenty eighteen. Mm. Twenty. Twenty. 2021. I filed for divorce in 2021. Oh, 12 to 2021. Yeah. 2012 to 2021, nine years. So there had been a nine year separation. Mm. So during this separation, there is no communication. But during the, in 2015, he came back. And when he came back, uh, because of the the gap, the three years gap, Mm. for me, I had moved on. Like I had stopped waiting for him. Mm. And I I had gotten so much stressed. Mm. I actually even Niliachana mm. stories at church. It was so stressful. Mm. I even started drinking, mm. you know. And during this time, 2014, 2015, mm. I met someone, a drinking buddy, I yeah. would say. Mm. And uh, this person, um, yeah, so we, we continue my drinking buddy and all that. And this is the time when he came back. So when he came back, I told him, I told him, you, you left us, mm. uh, and for me, I, I have moved on, and so I'm going to file for, for divorce. Mm. But I gave it all that time mm. for reconciliation. Mm. But what do you do for nine years when someone is not talking to you, is not communicating, mm. not doing anything? Mm. Yeah. So that's, that's how it ended, and because yeah. there was no hope, mm. then I filed for divorce, and mm. here we are. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so we yeah so i thought let me just say give my story a bit mm-hmm. there and uh so when we come back next time we're going to talk about we're going to analyze mm-hmm. what happened my divorce mm-hmm. and also analyze our relationship right yes, now yes, yes, me yes. and you and see um whether this is acceptable in god's in god's eyes, eyes. are we committing adultery mm. is this uh right mm. 
yeah was i right to file for divorce mm. as we were talking about reconciliation should i have given it more time mm. to reconcile did i try to reconcile did he try to reconcile mm. so we are going to look at that and also talk to people out there whoever it is that you, maybe you're going through you know divorce mm. or you have been divorced and you're wondering what to do and there's this thing people are telling you that god hates divorce why did you get divorced did you do the right thing are you eligible to get married again what are you supposed to do so we are going to to look into that and also talk about that and i know that uh, god will god will help us, will help us. Yes. Yeah? yes yeah yeah yes mm-hmm. final words no, um yeah um, um it's good that we've addressed your destiny this from a biblical outlook yeah uh, it's good to to because the first person you answer to is god yeah sure yeah uh, true. I, don't, i don't answer to uh, my partner I don't, I don't answer to me yeah you answer to god first yeah so if we get it with god right first mm. then we know we are right to all the way yeah thank you yeah Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, we'll let's let's continue with this conversation. It's important because there are so many divorced people out there. Yeah. Men and women. Yeah. So, what do you do now that the first relationship did not work? Mm. What do you do? Yeah. yeah. Are you accepted before God? What yeah. where do you stand? Where do you stand? Yeah. So, we're going to look at it and it's an important conversation and I know that God is going to to bless you. All right. So let's see you again here on Friday. Yes. On ready to mingle. Yes. Thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs>